If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Um, if you don't have a Bible, we've got some men who are, uh, would love to put one in your hand. Uh, you can just raise your hand if you would like one. You know, as a, if you've been here for equipping hour over the past few weeks, we've been uh, teaching on the clarity of Scripture and how the clarity of Scripture, what the clarity of Scripture has to do with the uh, perseverance of God's people in persecution. And we've been just tying those two themes together, perspicuity and persecution. And uh, this morning, what I'd like to, to do as we consider God's word in preparation for the Lord's table, I want to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where Paul recalls the words of Jesus and the instructions, the clear instructions that he gave his church. Something that's interesting to note about the Lord's Supper is uh, during a period of history that we actually discussed in Equipping Hour this morning, during the Reformation in the 16th century, this very issue, th even this passage, uh, produced many, many martyrs. It was the clarity about what God said about the Lord's table that many men and women went to their deaths for. Uh, during the reign of Mary Tudor, uh, from 1553 to 1558, over 288 Protestants were burned at the stake over this very issue over the issue of communion. Uh, it was so clear what God had said about communion that that many men and women were willing to die for these very instructions. Um, the, the, really, the issue in question was whether or not communion was a remembrance of the Lord and his death a remembrance, a representation, the bread and the juice? Uh, are those things representative of the Lord to remind us of Christ? Or is Christ, the God, the man, actually present in those elements, in the bread and in the, the wine? And there was such a disagreement between Catholics and Protestants over really what ended up being a three-year period during the reign of Mary Tudor, um, also affectionately called Bloody Mary, because of the many martyrs that she made. The disagreement was so sharp that they were willing to kill Protestants who denied that doctrine, the doctrine of transubstantiation, that the elements became the body and blood of Jesus. Um, just, if I can, tie all of these things together for us as we consider what we must for the Lord's table. God has clearly articulated what communion is about. There is no question what Jesus intended when he gave us this practice, when he instituted the Lord's Supper. It is so clear that if someone was willing to take your life for believing differently, then you could confidently stand where God stands on this issue. Look with me at verse 23 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where with crystal clear clarity, Paul lays out how we should think about this practice. He writes, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, 
this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is perfect clarity. Even clarity descended from the Lord Jesus himself to his apostle. Verse 23 says, I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, Corinthians. The Lord clearly communicated to Paul. Paul received that word. And he clearly communicated the practice to the Corinthians and even would have practiced it with them. He recalls the night when Jesus was betrayed and what he did on that night. He took the simple substances of bread and what would have been wine and he gave thanks. And as he did that, he told the disciples present at that last supper, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. There was no way that the very things Jesus was holding could have been his body because he was still standing among them. And, in the, and then in the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. He is holding up the cup, calling the cup the new covenant. Not the actual liquid in the cup. If you were being literal in the wooden sense, you would have to say the cup, not the contents of the cup were transformed. Not even Catholics take that position. So this is a clear remembrance that he mentions numerous times. This is a practice instituted by the Lord Jesus himself to remember him by. As often as this is practiced in the church, here it's every week, we take this time to remember Jesus. And so you should take this time to remember him. Remember what? Remember that his body and blood were given on your behalf, Christian. Jesus, God who cannot die, subjected himself to physical limitations so that he could become prone to death, so that he could offer up his life on your behalf to endure God's wrath and punishment and judgment and fury against your sinful thoughts, your sinful deeds, your sinful motivations, your less than perfect motivations and acts in this life, he endured that on your behalf so that in time you would be saved. Remember the cost that this costs Christ as you take the bread, as you drink the juice. Um, this is not intended for those who have had a good week, who have looked at the past several days and consider themselves faithful. This is for those who believe in the substitutionary death of Christ. And so you can joyfully as Jesus says in verse 26, as Paul writes, proclaim the Lord's death in this manner. Uh, the men are going to come now. If you embrace Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then take the cup with us. And if you do not believe in the Lord, if you have yet to submit yourself to Christ, then just let the bread and juice pass. 
And as you have opportunity, talk to us about the gospel. Talk to us about what it means to believe in Jesus. We would love to see you come to know him. Uh, On your own, when you're prepared, take the bread and juice, and I'll be back to pray for us.